Yes, Mr. Ahmad, you can start now. OK. Uh, inshallah, today we will uh, make a demonstration for uh, this uh, heat exchanger, which is the AJS uh, type uh, team heat exchanger. Uh, after receiving uh, your drawings for this uh, heat exchanger, our uh, technical team uh, prepare uh, the 3D model for uh, this heat exchanger, and we can uh, check the uh, inside uh, components for this one, like the tube bundle. Let's open this tube bundle. And we will create it from scratch, inshallah, in this uh, demonstration to uh, know the steps uh, of uh, using SEG software and how we can create elements and tube pattern uh, arrangement. Here we have this uh, tube uh, uh, bundle. And if we take a section here in this uh, channel, you can figure that we have this uh, pass partition locations. And if we take a section in the longitudinal direction, we can figure that the arrangement of uh, baffles, okay, and tubes, tie rods, like that. Okay, now let's uh, start creating an, a new project. Uh, we will uh, create this project from scratch, inshallah, in this demonstration. But before starting, uh, let me ask you how much time you will take to uh, make uh, those drawings by the traditional way, uh, by using the AutoCAD, uh, uh, and uh, uh, how much time you will take to make a 3D model if you are using uh, Autodesk Inventor as a pure uh, CAD software? Yeah, normally we used to take uh, here up to four days to prepare the drawing in AutoCAD. And uh, once again, then after checking, uh, if some comments or anything is there, then fifth day we will do. So you can consider four to five days. Okay. Uh, let's uh, start our uh, demonstration of today, inshallah. Let's uh, define the location of the project here, the project name. Now let's uh, select the uh, module that we would like to generate, which is the heat exchanger module. Uh, this module will give you the ability to create a tube sheet and uh, tube pattern arrangement. From here, we will select finish to start generating the project uh, files. Now from the uh, SEG tree, you will find uh, the uh, two nodes on this tree. The first node is the project node. From this node, you will define the uh, project information like project number, uh, client, location, manufacturer, all of that. And from here for the uh, equipment uh, level, we will uh, name or make a rename for this equipment as heat exchanger AJS type. OK, and from here you can define the design uh, design data for this uh, uh, heat exchanger for the shell side and the tube side. And if you would like to modify or edit, you can do that easily. And you can check this uh, area on other uh, recorded videos uh, on our channel to figure out how you can deal with the design. Data. But now we will uh, focusing on the modeling and the detailing of this exchanger. Uh, from here, we will select the equipment setting. And from the equipment setting, we will define the position of the equipment, which is a horizontal position. And from here, let's select the direction of the assembly from right to left direction. Yes. Uh, is this value is taken directly from the pivot or? Uh, you can enter it manually. You will enter it manually. We, as discussed before, uh, HT, uh, the BVL uh, exported access file not include information for the uh, heat exchanger uh, data. Okay. So we cannot deal with BV elit because no information on the access database file, as mentioned before. Uh, okay, here for from the setting we will uh, of the equipment we will start selecting the direction of the assembly to start it from the left to right, like in your drawing. So we will start from the blind flange in this direction to end at the uh, uh, right uh, head on the right hand side. From here, we will define the uh, delivered uh, blade dimensions, which is the raw material dimension, and let's click Save. Now let's add the first element. From here, we will select the equipment, and from the elements here, we will select the blind flange, which is the first element, and let's make it as uh, B1. So we will name it as B1. 
And from here you can figure that we have uh, many different types of blind flanges, but let's select the exchanger blind flange. And from here we will uh, define the dimensions of this blind flange as mentioned in your drawings. Okay, That's the uh, flange ID, flange OD, the uh, thickness of the flange, the bolt circle diameter, Okay, the uh, bolt hole diameter, the number of bolts, the raised face thickness, the second raised face thickness, the raised face outside diameter. Okay, and from here, let's select the bus partition type. Uh, uh, we will select it six passes uh, mixed or edge bended, and this type will be clear when we select the uh, gasket. So from here, let's select the uh, bus partition uh, width uh, 13 millimeters, the fillet and the bus partition orientation. This value is very important because you, we will uh, here we will rotate the uh, tube buses 90 degrees. OK, uh, and I will show you uh, the uh, uh, gasket uh, orientation to know that value where it comes. Now we will define the bus lane. Uh, of the bus partitions. Okay, and now let's click on save. Here, if we uh, come uh, uh, open SEG and add another gasketed uh, gasket uh, item with bus partition, so let's add uh, G1, which is a gasket with bus partitions, and let's select it, uh, from here the uh, bus partition type, which is uh, uh, six bus partitions mixed uh, or uh, each uh, banded for front side, which is that type, uh, that image here. We have this type of uh, uh, gasket. So we will rotate it 90 degree to get that shape of the bus partition. Now we will define the dimensions of uh, this bus partition, the, ins uh, the uh, inside diameter, the uh, thickness of this gasket, the width of that one. OK, after that we will define the uh, thickness, which is the thickness of the mid piece right here. We will define the bath lane as we defined on the bath partition, the fillet and the orientation. OK, let's click save. And from the setting, we will make a rendering for elements during creation to give us the ability to uh, make a rendering for elements during the creation on Autodesk Inventor. Now let's click Start Assembly to start creating uh, those two elements on uh, SEG. Now we have the first uh, element, which is the uh, blind flange. Uh, uh, during that, we will uh, generate the uh, uh, gasket. OK, now we have this gasket. As you can figure, the rendering of the element during creation takes place. OK, now let's add the third element, which is this body flange. After that, we will add a can and another body flange. OK, so let's come back to SEG and from here, let's add a designed flange. Let's name it as F1. And from here, let's select the suitable type that required, which is integral uh, weld neck flange with including this groove. I hope that you can uh, take a look on the image on the right hand side, the uh, grooved face, flange with a grooved face. Let's define the inside diameter, the end thickness, the neck thickness, after that the neck length and the uh, uh, flange outside diameter, flange thickness, raised face thickness, raised face outside diameter, bolt circle diameter, and number uh, bolt uh, hole diameter, number of bolts. And from here we will select flipped to make the facing of the flange. Uh, here you can figure the facing uh, of this flange to the right hand side. By clicking on flip, we will make the facing on the left hand side. Let's click save and let's add a new element, which is can one. Can one. OK, 
Okay, and from here we will select the shell type. We have many different types. You should select the uh, required type in your case. So from here, let's select shell type, which is a shell including a welding line. Let's define the inside diameter, the thickness, the longitudinal welding line orientation, and the length of this shell course. Let's add another flange, which is the channel flange. Let's name it as F2. Sorry, let's select the designed flange, F2. And from here, we will select uh, F1 to make it looks like F1 because they are the same dimensions. So from here, we will select F1 and remove the flipped direction to make the facing on the other side, like this flange here, the facing on the other side. So let's come back here and click Save. Now let's click on the assembly to start generating the uh, assembly of uh, the body flange, shell, and the second body flange. And you can figure that the uh, 3D model of the element created automatically and assembled automatically without uh, uh, any user uh, control. Uh, SEG will take care about uh, everything uh, regarding assembly and uh, uh, part modeling. After that, we will add a bus partition here on this can. So from elements, we will select the can one. And from here, you can figure that you can add uh, many different attachments like supports, nozzle openings, lifting lugs, external attachments and internal attachments. So from internal attachments, we will add front bus partition. Let's add this bus partition. And from here, we will select the suitable type, which is six passes that we uh, defined, type A, which is on the uh, uh, tube side. And from here, we will define the uh, dimensions of this tube bath, the thickness and the end thickness of this one, the uh, extended lens on the left hand side and right hand side the chamfer the pin hole diameter and don't forget to change the orientation to make it 90 degree okay and from here uh, uh, let's define the uh, offset from the visit center line which is the bus lane location okay the same on the uh, blind flange and let's click save now let's click start the assembly to create the uh, Uh, pass partitions. Okay, now let's take a, a section uh, on uh, this uh, assembly for the channel. So from view, let's take a section, a half section, to figure out the location of the uh, gasket and raised face here and there. Okay. So let's make this section a little bit moved here. Okay, and you can figure that the location of, let's add the uh, other gasket. Okay, and uh, one more point, if you would like to uh, divide your uh, assembly in uh, sub assemblies, like if you would like to make a separate assembly for the channel, a separate assembly for the tube bundle to prepare a separate drawing, we can do that easily. So from here, we will select uh, any node, and from here, let's add a new group. Let's add a channel, and this channel will start from B1 and end it to F2. Okay, now if we take a look to the assembly here, <clears throat> now uh, it's easy. Uh, we'll start creating <clears throat> a new separate assembly for the channel and we just need to update it to uh, update the links between elements so you can figure that the font of each node become uh, blue and after uh, making a run again the assembly will uh, reassembled again and you can figure that we have only uh, one assembly here for the channel which includes all items of the channel like that. That's an assembly including those items. So you can easily make a detailed drawing for this channel. Let's start proceeding with the uh, uh, next step, which is the tube bundle. Before that, we will need to generate uh, another gasket. 
uh, between the flange F2 and the tube sheet. So from elements here, we will select a gasket a tube sheet and let's select G2. And you can figure that the G2, which is the second uh, gasket, is uh, not included on the uh, channel assembly. And from here, we will make it looks like G1 because they have the same arrangement of uh, if you take a look to the first uh, gasket, the type of the gasket and the dimensions, if you go to the second gasket uh, after making it same as, you will figure that all dimensions are the same. So you will not need to enter the values again. From here, let's add a tube sheet. So let's add tube sheet one. Okay. And from here, we will select the required or the suitable type of the uh, tube sheet, which is in our case, it's a tube sheet gasketed with shell and uh, channel extended as flange. Okay, as if we come here, you can figure that the uh, gasket type here is extended as flange. So now let's define the dimensions of the uh, tube uh, sheet. So from here, let's define the uh, outside diameter. The left wrist face diameter. The right left face diameter. Okay, the thickness of the first wrist face. Okay, the thickness of the tube sheet. And from here, the uh, left wrist face diameter. So kindly take a look to the image on the right hand side to know the value of the parameters that you will uh, change. Uh, here the bolt circle diameter and the uh, bolt to hole diameter, the number of bolts and the holing orientation here. We will rotate the uh, whole uh, orientation to 90 degrees and from here uh, it's not one bus, so we will remove this checkbox and select the uh, suitable uh, number of buses, which is six buses mixed or uh, H-banded, looks like the, uh, the gasket that we select, the fillet, bus partition orientation, the uh, top uh, offset, which is the bus lane or offset of the, uh, of the bus partition, as bare your drawings here, if you check that, that's the value, which is the offset of the bus partition. So we will define it like that and click yes. OK, now uh, for this tube sheet, we will start creating the uh, tube pattern uh, arrangement. From here, let's click on a tube bundle. And from this uh, dialog box, we will start creating the tube pattern arrangement inside this tube sheet. So from here, let's click edit and let's define the dimensions of the shell. The uh, thickness diameter is 12 and shell to tube clearance is 20. And the tube uh, 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 diameter is 19.05, uh, the tube clearance on the tube sheet. So you can figure that the tube hole diameter is calculated automatically. It's 19.25. Uh, uh, we will define the uh, uh, the um, the pitch of between the tubes, the spacing between tubes. And from here we will define the hole clearance on the uh, baffle. Define the uh, top clearance. Let's take a look on those values. Uh, if we make a draw, for example, you can figure that if you would like to make a clearance for uh, for the from the left and right. So let's make this value as 190 degree, 190 degree, and let's click draw. You can figure that we will uh, select the area of drawing the tubes uh, inside the shell. So let's go to the next step. And from here, let's <clears throat> select the number of the uh, pass partition. So let's <clears throat> select the suitable uh, pass partition for our case. And from here, let's define the perpendicular pass lane and barrel pass lane. If we take a look <clears throat> to this image here, as per your drawing the uh, spacing between tubes here and there, if we take a look, the spacing here uh, four tubes uh, besides the uh, pass partition is 22 and 22. And the whole diameter, the whole diameter uh, with that value. So the uh, pass lane value, which is that value, we will need to define it here. So 
uh, like that, and that's the bus lane. And uh, let's make the bus partitions are symmetric because if we would like to move the, those bus partitions up and down, the uh, top and the bottom will uh, move uh, with each other. From here, we let's define the uh, holes. So the tie rod, we will make it 14 as per your rows and from here. And the uh, from tube layout, we will make uh, we will select this type, which is hole with uh, this chamfer. And from the tie rod, we will define the uh, tie rod depth and the size of uh, the. Uh, if we take a look to the tie rod here, okay, we have that's the tie rod penetration, but the tie rod uh, hole depth we make it 22, and here the diameter and the thread length. So let's make it 12 and like that. The same for ceiling rod, we will make it 22, and from here the size of this one. And the uh, let's make a, a draw of uh, this tube sheet. You can figure that after modifying the pass partitions, we have this arrangement. Uh, the next step, which is the uh, cube layout. Here you can figure that they use the tube layout in, in, in this model, which is the uh, this type. So we will uh, select the uh, Square the type 90 degree. We will select this one. And from here, let's select uh, the position of uh, the big point to be at the center. And let's draw again. You can figure that <clears throat> the uh, orientation of nose of holes uh, will be uh, not connected to the center because the spacing, which is the mid center point, which is located to the center line of the uh, tube sheet. So to, to change it, if, you, if we take a look to the uh, tube sheet here, you can figure that we have a hole on this area on the center line. So we will select this to make it big from the center line of the tube and let's draw again. You can figure that the tubes here will be on the uh, on the middle on this uh, chamber. chamber. OK, so uh, from here, let's go to the bus uh, uh, bus partitions locations. And let's move the bus partitions up. <clears throat> okay, so we move the bus partition up. So if we uh, uh, calculate the number uh, of those tubes per uh, room, uh, we will make a tie rod here and another tie rod there. Here the same for this tie rod. We will remove these tubes, those tubes. Okay, to make it looks like your drawing. Another more thing, we will add some uh, ceiling rod. So we will select the bus partition and add a ceiling rod from here. The same, let's add a ceiling rod there. Another one. On the same side, we will make <clears throat> another ceiling rod here and another ceiling rod there. OK, now let's uh, export those data to uh, it's easy to start creating the uh, tube pattern and keep those information for the uh, tube pattern. Before before this step, let's calculate the number of tubes. Here we have uh, 45 plus 45 plus 55 plus 55, 56 plus 56. The number of tubes bear each room. The total number is uh, 330 tubes, the same number of uh, the tube uh, as bear your drawing here. If we take a look, we have 33 tubes, the same arrangement of the tubes, and we rotate it 90 degree. OK, so let's click uh, export from here. So from this button, we will export the data of this tube sheet and let's close this. Uh, from here, let's uh, add uh, the uh, tube bundle uh, elements. Uh, let's generate a, a group first for the tube bundle. And let's make it start from tube sheet one to the end. So let's um, add a tube first. Let's add a tube. And from here, we will uh, select the uh, suitable type 
for uh, the tube. Here you can figure that you have the standard tube with standard lenses, but in our case, we will select a uh, user defined lens and defined the uh, uh, tube uh, length as their uh, drawings, the uh, tube thickness and the tube offset from the tube sheet. Now we, we have the ability to create a group for the tube bundle. So uh, let's create this assembly first. Okay, now we have the uh, second tube sheet here. And the tube sheet will create it without any holes. Uh, there is another tool which is creating a tube pattern and a tie rod pattern and tube holing on the tube sheet. And we will use it after adding the elements to the tube bundle. Okay, now we have this tube. Now let's generate a group for this bundle. And this group will include uh, the tube sheet one and the tube. After creating the assembly, it takes seconds. We will click on start to generate this simply and arrange it elements inside it. OK, now let's come back to uh, SEG and from here let's add uh, a tie rod to the uh, this tube bundle. Let's add a tie rod. And from here we will define the dimensions of the tie rod, the lens the uh, start thread lens, the other dimensions, and the knot size. Let's add a ceiling rod. Ceiling rod. The same, we will define the dimensions of the ceiling rod. And it's 12. Let's click save. Now let's click simply. Uh, if we take a look to the uh, this tube bundle assembly uh, for the baffles, we will figure that we have uh, two uh, identical baffles with uh, equal spacing, and the same for the other side here. And for the the spacing between baffles are not identical. So we will make a different patterns here for the identical uh, baffles. After creating uh, the tie rod assembly, we will add the uh, baffles and define them. OK, now let's uh, create the, uh, the baffles. See, we will select the tube sheet and from here we will select baffle and let's add B1 and B3. OK, and from here we will select segmental baffle and define the dimensions of this baffle. thickness, the clearance, the location of this baffle, the orientation, and let's add a vent and make the value of this vent with uh, 10 millimeters. So let's add on the second baffle, which is B2 and B4. We will make it same as B1 and B3, but we will uh, change the uh, orientation and location for uh, this one. So we will change the spacing. Change the uh, location of this one. And uh, the orientation. Sorry, uh, we need to make it looks like uh, this one. OK, so 
here the location of this one we didn't define it in a correct way so the location here is five uh, seven oh that's not the material sorry so the location here okay, the orientation is like that and the quantity is to click save and from here let's do this and define the uh, location of the uh, this uh, buffer okay the location is eight three eight point seven and the orientation is 90. Sorry, that's the location, 998.99. And let's click Save. Let's add the third baffle. Okay, and for this type, we will select End Baffle. And let's define the dimensions of this baffle. Event height, the chamfer, and let's click save. Now, if we click on start simply, That's the first baffle here, which is, sorry, which is that one, the first baffle that we create, and that's the second baffle, and that's the third baffle, which is FB. Okay, so if we come back here, here we have those baffles. One more thing we forget for uh, B2, the required number is two baffles, so we will update it and click save. Now let's add um, the uh, other baffles on the other side, which is let's add those baffles and add those and the end baffle here. Okay, so we will need to add more three baffles. So uh, let's add uh, B5 and B7. We will make it looks like B1 and B3, and let's click Save. The only thing will change, which is the location. So the location 2676.29, and click Save. Let's add another baffle, which is B4, B4, and B6. They will be looks like B2 and B4, and let's click Save. The only thing will change is the location. And let's click on save. Now let's add the in the baffle, which is SB. And it will looks like the uh, FB baffle. And from here, let's define the dimensions and the location of this one. And let's click on save. Now let's click the simply. After this step, we will start creating, uh, we will generate the uh, floating head. Uh, after floating head, we will make the tube pattern arrangement, which includes the uh, holding of uh, tube sheets, uh, tube sheet holding and uh, baffle holding, the arrangement of tubes, tie rods, and ceiling rods. Okay, that's the uh, baffle B5 and B7. B4 and B6.
Okay, how, uh, now we have uh, all uh, the baffles for uh, this uh, tube bundle. Let's add the last element right now, uh, which is the uh, floating head. Okay, and let's click Save. And for this floating head, let's define the dimensions. Okay, the resin face. Maybe the uh, left face thickness, the thickness of the tube sheet, the tube length, the extended length, the uh, backing ring uh, uh, outside diameter, okay, the uh, thickness of the backing ring, okay, 0.8, the cut, this value is like that the uh, hole diameter, number of holes, and uh, uh, supply, uh, splice thickness, the splice width, and the number of holes per splice. On the, uh, this side, we will define the sum dimensions for the gasket. The gasket width, the dimension uh, G, 0.8, Sorry. Okay, so the uh, thickness eleven, the uh, radius, okay, the dimension G is thickness 10 millimeters the radius is 35 the width width is generate the tube uh, floating head simply. Here's the first element, which is the tube sheet of this floating head, the backing ring, the body flange on the other side of the floating head. Splice plate after that, the lifting lug. These stud bolts and nuts. Now we will start creating, after finishing this step, we will start creating the uh, tube uh, holding and the uh, tube arrangement. Okay, so we will come back to SEG. Again, and from uh, the tube sheet itself, we will go down here and uh, we will open the tube sheet holding. So let's check the assembly. Now it's the assembly of the tube bundle is done. If we take a look at it, that's the assembly of the tube bundle here. So let's make the pattern of tube. So from tube sheet holding, we will click on start holding to start proceeding the uh, tube pattern arrangement. This step may take uh, some minutes because uh, SEG will make a loop for the elements which uh, require to make a holding or uh, patterning uh, here. Uh, now, if we take a look to this tube sheet, you can figure that SEG now draw the location of holes on the tube sheet here automatically, everything done automatically. OK, 
see now the tubes, tube holding are done. Let's take a look on the second tube sheet. Now it's easy to make the whole sketching automatically. Okay, the, uh, now the step of the tube pattern. Here you can figure that the pattern of tubes. The uh, holding pattern on the baffles. second method. so uh, can you imagine how much time you will save in case of using uh, the uh, SEG tools to make uh, the elements uh, and um, this uh, stuff of work like uh, make a rolling pattern for uh, tubes and uh, tube sheet and baffles all of that uh, SEG can take care about it, if you would like uh, in a special case to make uh, some uh, special things like uh, we will discuss how to make, for example, the uh, the eye bolt uh, holding to pulling out the tube sheet uh, outside the uh, heat exchanger, something like that we can do it easily uh, and I will show you how to make it uh, manually, how to add some uh, uh, additional things that you would like uh, to make if it's not included in, in SEG. But as you can figure, SEG will take care uh, about uh, everything. But sometimes if you would like to add or modify something, you can do it easily by hand. The most complicated thing will be done and generated by uh, SEG. The uh, other uh, things uh, for uh, small things, if you would like to add it, uh, you can do it easily. The last baffle. After making the uh, tube holding, uh, SEG will generate the tie rod holding on the uh, tube sheet and the baffles. After that, make the pattern for the tie rod and sealing rod. Make the holding for uh, both inside the baffles uh, and the tube sheet. So the last tube sheet here. Now the uh, tie rod locations. The ceiling road locations on baffles, all of that will be done. The tie rod holding on the tube sheet, the ceiling rod holding, a pattern of the tie rods and ceiling rods. Here. Okay, now let's uh, proceeding with the uh, other uh, elements of the heat exchanger. Now we <clears throat> make the tube bundle. So let's start from the gasket, which is between the uh, tube sheet and this body flange, and we will proceed creating the other elements of the heat exchanger. So let's come back to SEG, and from here, let's select the heat exchanger and let's add a gasket 
G3. And let's select the user defined and define the inside diameter of this uh, one, the thickness and the width. Click save. Now let's add a designed flange. So from here, let's add F3. And we will make it looks like F1, the same dimensions of F1. Okay, so, uh, sorry. Let's get it from here. Let's add it like that, which is F3. Okay, and after creating it, we will make it looks like F1 from here. Okay. Okay, and after that, we will add uh, the can to From this one, we will select the shell type, define the inside diameter of this can, the thickness, which is 14 millimeters, and the longitudinal welding line orientation, the length of this course, and let's click save. For F3, we will flip the direction of this flange, and let's add, uh, sorry, it's uh, same as F1. Okay. Let's add another can. So from here, let's add can two. Let's make it looks like can two. But we will change the longitudinal welding line orientation. And the longitudinal welding line orientation, the length of the course. The only thing differ between F3 and F4, if we take a look here, which is the end thickness. Here you can figure that the end thickness is 12, but for those flanges, the end thickness is 14. So we will come back to F3 again and change the end thickness to 14. Okay, and let's click Start Assembly to generate the uh, shell elements. Okay, now let's add the uh, second uh, the uh, second body flange for the shell side. So from here, let's add a design flange, which is uh, will be F4. Okay, in F4, if we uh, take a look at the type of this flange here, it includes a rest face, not grooved rest face. It's a rest face. So we should take care about selecting the suitable item. Here, so we will select integral welding with a rest face, not a grooved rest face. So, from here, let's define the dimensions of this flange 700, 14, 20, 45, 1000, 55, 5 millimeters. The bolt circle, the rest face outside diameter is 875. The bolt circle diameter is 9. 144, the num hole diameter and number of holes, and let's click save. Now let's add another gasket. So from here, let's add G4. Okay, and click save. Now from G4, we will define the inside diameter, which is 849. The thickness is 3 millimeters, the width is 13, and let's click save. Now let's Click simply. After that, we will generate the uh, bonnet, which includes, if we take a look here, we will generate this bonnet, which is includes this flange, this shell course, and that uh, ellipsoidal head. Okay, here, after creating that, we will start creating the bonnet. So from here, we'll let's select this. And from here, let's add a design flange, which is F5. And let's click on save. And from here, we will select 
this type which is grooved uh, integral will neck grooved this type okay let me take a look because this flange including a group here so we should take care about that so from here we will define the dimensions circle diameter or diameter and number of bolts and it will be flipped now let's add another channel can pour so let's add can pour and from here we will select the can and select the type which is shell type and define the thickness in between the welding line and the length of the course. Let's add the last element, which is the end head. Okay, so from here, we will define the uh, dimensions. And make it flipped to make the convex to the other side and from here, let's click on assembly to start generating the uh, bonnet. As we discussed, if you would like to make a separate drawing, you can make a group for uh, some elements to uh, prepare them to generate a separate drawing. For them. Now, after finishing the uh, bonnet, we will start creating the support saddles. After saddles, inshallah, we will add the nozzles, uh, the service nozzles and the lifting gloves for this uh, heat exchanger. Now let's uh, select the uh, CAN one and let's add a support saddle. And from here, you can figure that you have many different type of supports and saddles like tilted saddle, stacked saddle. From here, we will select this type of saddle, which is exit. And from here, we will select the uh, saddle uh, for, uh, and the web will be on the left side. If we take a look, you can figure that the web of this saddle on the left side. So we will select this type from here, and we will start uh, uh, define the data, the uh, saddle angle, the saddle height, the thickness of the web, and from here the offset. Uh, well, it's 20 millimeters. The uh, uh, thickness, uh, let's make it 10 millimeters and let's add outer ribs. So the uh, width of the top, the width of the width here is different from that one. And if we take a look to the drawing of the saddle, it's in a separate drawing, but here I will define the dimensions as bare new drawings here the rib thickness and for the wear blade let's add uh, a wear uh, blade so for the wear blade the uh, contact angle the width of the wear blade the thickness of uh, the wear blade let's add a fillet and here the base blade dimensions so the base blade the width of the base blade the thickness 20 uh, Five and the whole diameter is 27. The whole offset from the long edge and short edge number of rows. The uh, location of the saddle and the whip offset. And let's click save. Now let's start creating the saddle simply. Let's take a look to the spacing. Uh, we need to uh, add uh, intermediate ribs. So uh, here, as per your drawing, we have an intermediate ribs. So I forget to add them. After finishing the assembly, we add the intermediate ribs and create the second set. Okay, so let's come back here for the saddle after 
finishing it and now it's a symbol. So from here, let's add an intermediate ribs and define the, the spacing between the uh, ribs like that. And the thickness of the ribs. Now let's add the sliding saddle. So from here, let's add sliding saddle. And for this sliding saddle, the web location on the right side. So we will select this type, which is the saddle on the right side. And let's define the dimensions, the web thickness. And let's add outer ribs. Here it's 20 millimeters. The 476.21. And the spacing between ribs and from here the wear plate and the width of the wear plate the fillet the base plate length width and thickness the hole diameter the offset of the hole from the long edge and here you can make it as a sliding saddle and from here you can define the slot lens we will define the uh, location of this saddle okay and the offset is 52 okay and click on save now let's click on start as simply and you can figure that we will start modifying the fixed saddle to add a new uh, mid uh, ribs on it after that, SEG will create the second saddle, which is the sliding saddle. Here, those are the mid ribs. <coughs> That's the second saddle and the whip on the uh, right direction. After the third step, inshallah, we will start creating nozzles on uh, the uh, heat exchanger for the uh, ch uh, channel side, uh, shell side, and bonnet side. Okay, now we have the uh, 3D model of this exchanger it takes around uh, up to this uh, here we will select the can and from the elements let's add a nozzle which is n8 okay and let's click add and from here we will select the type of this nozzle as a long wool neck nozzle the rating of this nozzle size and the location the orientation at zero degree and let's define the service of this nozzle as channel vent. Okay, and let's click save. Now, if we open the calculator and define the projection of this one and click calculate. Okay, now the projection of this nozzle will be 208. Now, if we click simply, we will get this nozzle. Uh, after creating this one, we will add the uh, another three nozzles to the uh, can uh, one. We have on the channel side, we have four nozzles, which is N8, N9, and N5, and N4. So let's add the other nozzles. Now we have this nozzle. So let's add the other nozzles in the, uh, one time and create them one time. So from here, let's add N9. And from here, let's select it as a long wool neck flange, the location, the orientation, and the name of this will be a channel drain. And let's click save with the calculator and we'll define the projection of this nozzle. Click calculate and click save. 
let's add uh, n4 n4 okay now we have the n4 nozzle it will be a nozzle from pipe so the size of this nozzle will be uh, four inches the uh, uh, schedule of this nozzle is 120 the location is on that value the orientation and the service of this nozzle is cooling water inlet and let's click save now let's add a flange to this pipe so from here in for flange okay so this flange we will select will the neck raise the face according to as maybe 16.5 select the rating the size of the flange and the schedule the same of the flange now we will come back to the nozzle and from here we will open the calculator to define the projection of the nozzle from the face of the flange so from here we will define the projection as 650 as bare or, uh, drawings here we uh, that's the projection of the nozzles uh, n8 and n9 and on another view uh, here that's the projection of n4 and n5 so let's come back here define it by that value and click save now let's add another nozzle which is n5 so from here let's add n5 and click save and from n5 here we will make it looks like n4 okay to uh, avoid repeating uh, that again and from here let's add another flange which is n5 flange and click save and from here we will make it looks like n4 flange click save and for n5 we will change the orientation of the uh, this nozzle so we'll make it the orientation on 90 degree and the name of the nozzle or the service of the nozzle outlet and let's click sorry let's click on save and now let's start the assembly to start creating the four nozzles in one time here we will start with in the line which is a long wall neck nozzle. In the four nozzle, which is a nozzle from uh, vibe. The last nozzle which is n5 and it's a flange okay now let's add the uh, bonnet uh, nozzles let's start with uh, the shell uh, nozzle now we have those four nozzles here let's add the uh, shell nozzles so from here let's select can3 and from here we will select uh, the uh, nozzle and let's add in 10 this nozzle is a long wall neck nozzle two inches and the location of this nozzle and at zero degree the service of this nozzle as shell vent click save first after that we calculate the projection which is like that and click calculate to calculate the projection let's add another nozzle which is n1 so let's add n1 and from here we will select the required type which is a helicide uh, or radial uh, forged hub like that case we have here this nozzle is a forged hub nozzle so from here let's uh, define the uh, size as 10 inches and the schedule is 14 40s and let's define the location and the orientation at zero degree the hub uh, uh, dimensions that the hub height the uh, hub uh, uh, thickness and the bevel height 
and from here let's define this nozzle as a service process gas uh, inlet and let's click save now let's add a flange to this nozzle so from here let's add a new flange We will select ASME B60.5, the rating 300, and from here let's select the size and the schedule. And let's come back to N1 again to define the projection after adding this uh, flange. So the projection here is 700, and let's click calculate. Now we have the projection of the hub. Let's add another nozzle, which is N2. And in N2, we will make it looks like N1 right now. And after that, we will make some modifications like changing the orientation and size. It's eight inches, the same schedule, the location like that. And it's on the orientation 190 degrees. The hub dimensions 150, the hub thickness is 40, and the bezel height and here it's gas outlet and let's click save let's add a flange to this one into flange we will make it as a rigid face size eight inches schedule 14 is we click save now if we come back to n2 we can define the projection as 700 to calculate the correct value of this one. Now let's add the last nozzle on the shell, which is N3. And we will make it looks like N2. And click save. Let's add another flange. N3 flange. After adding it, we will make it looks like F2 flange because they are eight inches, both of them. And for N3, we will change the location. And the same for the orientation, it's on uh, 190 degrees. Now let's generate the uh, assembly of nozzles on the shell side. Here we take a look to the assembly. Uh, uh, the last step for nozzles, we will add a vent and a drain nozzles uh, on the bonnet. After that, we will add the ceiling and uh, sliding parts. Here, as you can figure, we have uh, we have uh, uh, ceiling bars here, and we have a sliding bar there, two sliding bars. So another view, we can check from it here. That view is a little bit clear for the height of uh, those and another view here for the ceiling bars and we will uh, after adding the drain and the nozzle uh, drain and the vent nozzles for the bonnet we will proceed work with creating uh, ceiling and sliding bars for the tube bundle inshallah okay here if we come back to the model here the last nozzle which is in three on the shell okay now we have the uh, nozzles are created on the uh, uh, heat exchanger like that now let's add the last two nozzles on the bonnet so let's uh, select the uh, channel of the bonnet and from elements let's add n6 and from here let's select this one it's a long weld neck flange with a rating uh, 150 the size and the location 150 it's in zero degree and the service is uh, cover drain uh, cover vent okay, so that's the cover vent and from here we will define the projection okay 
let's add another nozzle which is in the seven in seven and it's a long wall the neck flange define the location and the orientation cover drain click save and define the projection okay and click save uh, one more thing we uh, i forget to uh, tell you about it which is uh, uh, will the detail from here you can define the will detail to make it appear on the drawing and uh, the nozzle table like if you would like to make the weld preparation with a double uh, V or single V, you can add a clad detail or not, but in our case it's uh, without clad. And you can define the uh, 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 root of the uh, fillet or the height of the fillet. So let's make it 10 millimeters for, for example. And if we take a look to the nozzles on the nozzle table, here you can figure that we have here, those are the nozzles, the uh, description or the service of the nozzle, the size, orientation, outside diameter, facing, and the welding style of uh, the this nozzle, and the projection, by the way, from the visual center line. Okay, uh, let's uh, create uh, this those nozzles, which is N6 and N7. Uh, after that, uh, we will proceed with the... Uh, 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 ceiling bars so let's come back here to the SEV okay now we are done the uh, all nozzles on our model. The uh, next step, we will add some, if we take a look here, if we take a section, half section, for example. Here we will add some uh, uh, ceiling and uh, ceiling bars, uh, top and the bottom and add sliding bars. Now let's remove the section. And from here, let's select the tube sheet. And from the elements, let's add uh, a sliding uh, or ceiling bar. So let's add ceiling bar. Uh, A. And from here, let's select the suitable type we need to add. So we will uh, divide this we will make because those are symmetric with the same height we will make them as uh, in one time and those we will make them in one time okay after that we will make the same at the top so let's come here and select the uh, that one is a double uh, vertical which is that one including spacing and the lens and uh, let's define the dimensions six the clearance and the lens the height so, the location okay, the orientation and the spacing okay uh, the height uh, here it's included on uh, on this drawing the height of each ceiling uh, ceiling bar so we will add another ceiling bar here. we will make it looks like ceiling bar a but we will change the height and spacing so the height we will change it and the spacing between the two bars. Okay, let's add another. So, select the tube sheet. Mm -hmm. 
bar C and we will make it looks like scene A, but we will change the orientation. Let's make it a zero degree and change the height. And let's click on save. Let's add another ceiling bar. We'll make it same as C or D. Okay, let's make it like that to keep the spacing and we will change the orientation to zero degree and the height of this one to 85. And let's click on start as simply to start creating the uh, ceiling bars. Now we will, uh, uh, after finishing this step, we will add the sliding bars. Okay. After that, we will add some lifting lugs, stud bolts, which is the connect uh, con uh, the connection between flanges, the stud bolts, which uh, tighten the uh, two flanges with each other. After that, inshallah, we will proceed with the uh, drawings of the heat exchanger. That's the last sliding uh, ceiling bar. Here, after adding it to the assembly, we will take a section to figure out. Here, we have those ceiling bars like that, top and bottom. Here. Okay, now we will add the sliding bars. So let's remove this section. And let's add the sliding bar. We will select the cube sheet and add sliding bar. Like yes, and from here we will select the suitable type for this sliding bar, which is a double radian, which includes a inclination angle between them. So it defines the dimensions. of this one, the orientation and the inside angle, and let's click start the assembly. Now let's take a section here. And you can figure that those are the sliding bars. Now let's add some lifting lugs as bear the uh, drawings. From here, you can figure that we have many different types of lifting lugs. Uh, we will select the suitable type in this case, which is lug seven. So channel lug one. And let's define the dimensions of this one. The uh, dimension C, the offset, the thickness, and the whole diameter. Let's add uh, uh, the, uh, let's make it with a fillet without a chamfer. Uh, I think it's uh, not including a chamfer here. Yes, it's uh, with a fillet. So we will remove the checkbox of the fillet. And from here, let's uh, add the uh, wear blade dimensions with wear plate and the location 45 degrees 
click save let's add another lifting lock on the uh, shell lug two and we will make it looks like lug one but we will change the orientation to make it on 350 degrees and let's click save now let's start creating the assembly of lugs of the lifting lugs The second lifting lug on the channel. Okay, now let's uh, add the, the lifting lugs on the uh, shell side. Now we have those lifting lugs on the channel. And you can figure easily uh, if there is any clash with welding lines or not. Something like that, uh, you, you can make a visual inspection easily by using the 3D model to check if you have any issues uh, before uh, manufacturing the process. Now let's uh, select this scan and add some lifting lugs here. Shell lug one. And let's define the dimensions. chamfer the weird plate dimensions fillet and the location orientation is 30 degrees and another one to the shell we will make it the same with shell lug like one but we will change the orientation we have four lifting lugs for the channel if we take a look we have four lifting lugs two on this side and another two on the other side so let's add another two lifting lugs so lug three we will make it looks like shell lug one but with the same uh, with the same orientation but with another uh, location so the location in this case will be like that another lug which is the last lug shell four we will make it looks like shell lug two but with another location which is three thousand six hundred click save now let's click start yes simply uh, after this step inshallah we will uh, make uh, the uh, connection bolts for the flanges and the tube sheet and add some uh, attachments like uh, if we would like to add uh, a blind to uh, the vent hole or the drain hole how we can make that with the uh, plus adding the stud bolts, adding a name plate. After that, inshallah, we will proceed with the general arrangement drawing and uh, some other uh, drawings and the content of the drawing and how we can uh, control the content. Like uh, if we would like to export uh, the bill of material uh, nozzle table and uh, other tables to our uh, drawing. That's the uh, third lifting lug. One more lifting lug uh, is there. Okay, now we have those lifting lugs on the uh, shell side. 
and you can figure that uh, here this longitudinal building line orientation we may need to change it a little bit so for example let's make it on uh, for this shell so let's select can3 and from here we can change the longitudinal building line orientation so let's make it on 110 degrees and click start to change the longitudinal building line orientation and figure out how it far from the lifting lug so we can minimize the value with five degrees to make it between the lifting lug and the wear plate so let's come back and change this 105 degrees click save and start the assembly to move it a little bit up like that now i think it's uh, far from the if you would like to measure the distance for example from the inspect tool we can measure the distance from that line to this point we have uh, 58 millimeters so if you would like to uh, change the uh, orientation of the welding line now you know the way how to do it now let's add some uh, attachments for the uh, for the uh, blind and uh, connected bolts. So from here, we will add a, a stud bolt to connect B1 with uh, F1. So let's add B1 stud bolt. And from here, we will select the uh, type of the nut, which is UNC nut, and the size will be one inch. The stud length will be to uh, 120 and the uh, knot spacing will be with that value which is here if we measure it the knot spacing from here to there from that face so that will be the values that we need to uh, define it here now let's add another uh, connection between f uh, f2 and uh, tube sheet and f3 so from uh, from here if we uh, select uh, the uh, sorry if we select f2 we can add f2 stud bolts here and the same we will select u in c nut and size the length of this stud the spacing Okay, the same we can measure the value of the spacing between us from here to there. Okay, and let's add another uh, stop for uh, between N4 and N5. So from here let's add F4 stud. Okay, so from here let's select UNC, select the size one inch, define the uh, length and the not spacing. Now if we click save and start creating the assembly, we will get the uh, uh, stud bolts uh, assembly. You can figure that uh, the uh, knots and uh, bolts will be uh, generated and assembled automatically from SEG library. Okay, we have here the bolting.
the last uh, tightening bolts, which is connect uh, F4 and F5 flanges, uh, the fl uh, flange of the bonnet with the shell flange. Here, as you can figure, after adding the tightening bolts on the flanges, let's add uh, one more thing for the uh, vent hole. Let's make one sample of those. Let's add a blind flange uh, here with the uh, uh, tightening bolts. So from here, we let's select the nozzle in eight, the external connection of this one, and let's add a gasket in eight gasket. And from here, we will select the uh, required uh, or the suitable gasket, which is a raised face gasket according to SME, and select the size of the gasket. Now let's add a blind flange. Eat blind. From here, we will select the raised face blind flange according to SME and make it flipped to make the facing of this one uh, to the gasket facing. Now we have uh, this vent nozzle with blind. Now let's add uh, a stud bolt here, so we we'll select a blind flange and uh, in eight stud. So from here, let's select the uh, UNC and the uh, size of this one is five by eight, and the length of this one like that. And let's add a lifting lug to the blind. Okay. If we take a look here, we have a lifting lug on the blind flange. So let's select the uh, flange and from here, let's add a lifting lug. If you would like to make it with a chamfer or with a fillet, so let's make it like that, B1 lug. And from here, we will define the dimensions that would uh, let's keep this value 10 millimeters as a pin hole. Let's make it 30. The radius, let's make it uh, 50. And the uh, hole offset, make it the location 30 millimeters, orientation at zero. And uh, let's click save. Now, if we click the assembly, we will start creating the lifting lug. After that, the start bolt of the nozzle. Now we will add a name plate to this uh, uh, ETX changer. Uh, after that, I will show you something we discuss uh, it during generating that U bundle, which is if you would like to add uh, some more details like the uh, pulling eye bolt holes on that tube sheet, how you can do it uh, by using uh, Autodesk Inventor, and it's easy to do something like that. But before that, let's add uh, a name plate here. So let's select uh, can two, and from elements let's add an external attachment. You can figure that you have many different uh, elements you can add it. Let's add a name plate, and from here if you select the name plate, you can figure that you have many different uh, uh, types of, of name plates. So let's select the uh, suitable type for our case, which includes. Uh, this one, for example, if you if you would like to add an ask me nameplate or client nameplate, you can add it. We will just add a, a bracket for that, and let's uh, define the uh, location of this one. So let's make it 100 and uh, 1000. 
1200 and let's click on start to add this nameplate bracket. Okay, now let's uh, make uh, a modification on the uh, tube bundle. If we select the tube bundle from here, which is this one, we can open the uh, tube sheet one. So let's open it. And on the other side, which includes the uh, pass partitions, we would like to add uh, four uh, holes for the bowling eye bolt. So how we can do that by hand. If we select this surface, for example, you can add four points like this and they define the uh, location of each one so let's let's make it this for example like like that and from the center line and let's make the others okay so let's Defined the offset from here looks like this. Now we have those four holes with the same dimensions, and we can use them now to make a holing. So from from here you can uh, select the uh, feature of the holing, which is that one, and automatically you can figure that the whole uh, configuration is selected for the four points. And from here you can select the uh, if you would like to make it uh, with a distance, hole with a distance like that. And if you would like to add a thread on it, so you can define the uh, thread length. Now you have a full control on on the uh, the uh, hole shape that you would like to generate. So let's make it 30 millimeters for example the depth of this hole and you can select uh, let's make it isometric profile and select the, the size of the hole like that and uh, let's make it with this one let's make it uh, 24 for example and here the total length is 26 here 90 degrees Okay, now we have this hole with a thread, so if we click in OK, we can get the whole pattern of the tie uh, of the eye bolt that we would like to generate. Something like that, or a modification like that, you can make it easily by hand if you would like to add something uh, to your model. And it will be reflected automatically to uh, the drawings. Okay, now we have the 3D model. And if you would like to add insulation to it, like in your drawing, as we uh, uh, mentioned uh, on the 3D model uh, that our technical team created uh, from the uh, CAN side, for example, if you would like to add an external attachment, you can add insulation from here. So uh, just you will define the insulation thickness uh, density to calculate the, the weight of the insulation. Uh, and you, you can get it in your 3D model. Now we would like to uh, know more how we can get the bill of material of uh, this heat exchanger and uh, how much number of nozzles and the detail of nozzles. If we uh, take a look to the tables here, we will uh, find the bill of material table. And here in seconds, SEG will calculate the bill of material of, of this heat exchanger. As you can see, we have in this model, uh, 920 elements in this model and here SEG will take care about the identical items like for example here we have a tubes we have 330 tubes are identical uh, for nuts we have 132 nuts from UNC1 with the same material and the same weight. If the material is different SEG automatically will separate them. If the type is different SEG will separate them and give them uh, a separate uh, item number. So you can figure easily that uh, SEG calculate the uh, bill of material with the weights. So the total weight of this heat exchanger is around uh, 7.3 tons. Uh, 
uh, here the weight of each uh, element, the material of each element, and the technical characteristics of each element. Like if you if you have an ellipsoidal head for the last head, uh, they defined it here as an ellipsoidal head to bear one, the height per the diameter. Uh, the inside diameter, nominal thickness, and the minimum thickness after forming and the straight flange. For uh, for seamless nozzles, which is they are standard uh, parts, you can figure that the description of it. It's NBS4, schedule uh, 120, and the length of the pipe. For the flanges, the standard flanges, will be defined like that, the NBS2 long, uh, long weld neck flange rest with the rest face, the class of, of the flange is 150 and the length of this flange and the end thickness. Like that, you can get the description for elements, for standard and non-standard elements. For example, here for this forged hub, the size of the forged hub, the hub thickness, the length of the nozzle and the end thickness of this hub. Okay, uh, now let's take a look on the nozzle table. As we discussed uh, from uh, minutes, the nozzle table includes the nozzle tag, the nozzle service, the size of the nozzle, the outside diameter, many different uh, fields uh, regarding to the nozzle like projection and the reinforcing band, will the detail, all of that. And if you would like to make some modifications uh, and uh, remove some uh, columns, from here and the keep, uh, what would you like to keep? So from the column setting, you can select and the choice the required columns that you would like to export it to your drawing by selecting it and select that is this checkbox. Now let's, uh, if, if you would like to get a list of flanges, you can, by clicking on flange, you will get a list of flanges. The same for gaskets, if you would like to get a list of gaskets. Fittings, if you have a fittings the nozzle orientation, the orientation of all nozzles in, in your project. And you can get uh, an estimated material cost report by defining the price of each material per ton, and SEG will calculate the estimated uh, cost for material. Now let's generate uh, a detailed drawing for the channel, for example, before making the uh, general arrangement. Here, as we discussed on the beginning, we make a separate groups for the channel and the bundle to show you how, if we would like to generate a separate drawing for this uh, assembly. So here we have this channel, which is include the blind flange and uh, its attachments, the uh, shell and the flange. Now, if we select the channel itself and right click on it, you will get this uh, list and from here we will select a drawing and select create drawing. Now we will select the size of the drawing. Let's select A2. And from here select the orientation of the drawing, land, uh, landscape or portrait. The, uh, the location of the title block, if you would like to make it right bottom or top right, or select the suitable location for your case. And from here let's select the elevation view and let's select the uh, right view okay or let's make it uh, as a one view which is elevation only and take a section on on it if, if you would like to make something like that or uh, you can make it with uh, another side so let's make it a uh, spacing between them like that and here that's the elevation orientation if we open the channel for example if we take a look and open the channel here that's the assembly of the channel let's make the uh, uh, UCS is disappear and from here that will be the elevation view. If you take a look to the left view, that will be the elevation view. If you make it front like that, that will be the elevation view. So from here you can select the suitable elevation view for your case and in this case we will make it a front. Okay, so to make this as an elevation view. Okay, now let's uh, define the location of the uh, the view on the drawing and uh, the scale. And let's add a bill of material in this uh, drawing. And uh, let's add some nodes. If you would like to add some nodes, you can edit or add or modify if you would like. For example, if you would like to delete this, just to select the uh, the node and delete it and if you would like to edit select the node and click edit to be able to edit it and if you would like to add just write your 
uh, new node and add it to be added to the nodes. And if you would like to import it from an Excel sheet, you can import it directly from here. Now we will select some welding details, suitable welding details to our case. We have uh, a flange, welding flange to shell, and uh, another uh, welding detail for we have this. And no more welding details required, so we will click save. Uh, and right now we will define this as a channel. And it has DWG. And from here, define the revision table. Okay, and let's click save. Now let's add some empty rows. And from the design data, we will keep the location of tables and click on create drawing to start creating the uh, drawing of the channel. Here's the revision table and the bill of material of this channel. The general notes and the welding details. Now, if you, if you would like to change the location of the views and the scale, you can make it by hand, but anytime you will need to make update, it will be uh, updated according to uh, the data that you saved in SEG. So it's better to modify it from SEG itself. So from here, let's come back to the drawing. And from drawings here, let's click on create. And let's define the location of, uh, redefine the location of the uh, that one and increase the scale a uh, little bit and click on create <coughs> to update the uh, dimensions of this one <coughs> now let's add some dimensions and annotations here and there so let's select this one like that now let's add the line in there. Now let's add a projection of the nozzles as per your drawings. So from here to there, as we discussed, it should be 650 for nozzle N4 and N5, like that, and for the in 8 and in 9, it's 570 from the facing of the nozzle, like that. Now let's add some balance for nozzle. So let's add a nozzle tag. So here we select the flange. After that, we will modify our selection to select the nozzle itself. But let's add right now the flanges. After that, we will modify it. have those models, sorry. Select nozzle tag. And continue now, we will select the nozzle instead of flange like that. We will select the nozzle and remove the column of the flange like that. Now, if we would like to define the offset of the pass partitions like that we can do it easily from here to there as defined it in drones and for the uh, lifting lugs if we would like to change the, uh, that one let's make it aligned to edge like that the same for this let's make it aligned to edge and aligned to edge and select this edge. Now if we select that we can, for example, if you would like to make it outside here like that, you can make it outside exchanger. 
Okay, so by, by that way, we defined the uh, general dimensions of this channel. And if, if you would like to make a separate detailed drawing for the uh, this blind flange, for example, we can add it on the drawing. So we can make a modification on this one to uh, move up the uh, change the, that one to make it on like that. So we moved this view up right like that. And if you would like to add a detail for the blind, for example, so let's open the blind flange here, open. And now we can import it to the drawing like that. You can move it like that if you would like to change the scale. And let's add the bolt uh, circle uh, diameter. Yeah, sorry, we can make it from uh, automated center lines, so we can do it like that. So we get the automated center line from here. So if we open the uh, uh, hole and thread, we can get the definition of of the hole. We have. Uh, if we would like to add the uh, number of holes, we can modify it easily from here. If we uh, define the quantity by that way that and uh, add the uh, number of holes like that. So we have 44 holes with uh, 28 uh, hole diameter. By the same way, uh, we, you can take a section if you would like to add a section for this blind flange like that and make another detail for this area, for example. That's just an example to give you the uh, what can you do with with that. So if you would like to add dimensions like this. So if you would like to add a clearance for uh, this thickness, for example, so from here, uh, from the uh, if we double click on the dimension and from precision here, if you would like to make it uh, a deviation, you can make, uh, for example, it's just a for, for example, so you can make it uh, like that. So uh, like that and make the precision is one degree and you can control the size, by the way, of, of the precision. So if we come back to the management, you can change the text uh, style dimension. So if we go to the linear and tolerance, you can uh, change the size and the control the text uh, size dimension from here. For example, if you would like to uh, minimize it, you can change the scale to so you can control uh, on that uh, easily uh, by using the uh, uh, default setting of uh, the uh, Autodesk inventor. Here, if you would like to add the location of nozzles you can add it like that from the facing of each nozzle uh, the orientation and the projection of the lifting lug for example if we would like to add a detail for the lifting lug so let's open that one and open the lifting lug and if we come back here and let's add a, a lifting lug detail define the uh, that one Make it as a channel. Okay. And if you would like to make it a perpendicular, just so we will rotate it and make it vertical like that. Okay, and let's add the dimensions to this lifting block. Measure from here to there, or if you would like to measure it from here to there, reduce the thickness. Here and if you would like to take another view to define the near blade width, for example, something like that. And if you would like to add a weld sample, so let's add this as like that. If you would like to add a weld sample here or there, so something like that, you can do it easily. So. 60 millimeters around typical. Okay. Uh, the thickness of that one, the thickness of of the wear plate, and if you would like to uh, add 
uh, 3D view or isometric view for the lifting lung you can add and edit or modify so let's make it shaded for example something like that you can do it easily uh, by using uh, after creating the 3d model you can do uh, anything that you would like to do <clears throat> now let's generate the general arrangement drawing now we have this drawing for the channel and let's generate the general arrangement drawing for the uh, heat exchanger so from here let's select a1 and from here, let's select uh, two views for the elevation view. Uh, let's keep only, okay. Let's add two views, one on the left and another on the right view. The spacing between views, let's make it three millimeters. And the elevation view will be the left view. So here, that's the left view. And we will make that one at the, the elevation view of uh, the detail. Now let's make it... Uh, add a bill of material as the design data as a nozzle table and from here let's check the building details if we would like to add more building details like the attachment of the saddle the any other attachment here okay save this and if you would like to add a client document list or visual document list add maximum allowable nozzle load if you have you can export it now Okay, and from here, let's edit this as a revision zero. Okay, let's save that and let's add some empty rows. Delete the first row from here. And from the design table, let's save this and start creating the general arrangement drawing. As you can figure, the size of the drawing will be modified automatically the uh, view locations here we will need to minimize the scale a little bit so after creating we will minimize the scale of the views and you can figure that the revision table here the bill of material shall be generated automatically and after creating the ga we will we can figure for for the first run of the ga we can figure that uh, sometimes we may need to separate the bill of material in a different sheet okay because uh, the the ga drawing includes a lot of uh, information so we may need to separate the bill of material in a, in a separate sheet to save some area on the general arrangement drawing and we will check how we can how we can do that inshallah for this drawing because this heat exchanger include uh, a huge bill of material little bit and you can figure the design data will uh, make a clash or laid on the bill of material table so we can move or separate some tables on another sheets on the same drawing and we we will check how we can do that inshallah after making the first generation of uh, the GA. Here, that's the general, the general uh, nodes, the nozzle table. The client document list and the visual document list. All of that, you can figure that it's generated automatically without any uh, user uh, uh, selection or just you, you will uh, define what you would like to export it to your drawing, like building details, the tables that you would like to export, and it will create it automatically. Uh, by the way, if you if you take a look to our videos, uh, in some in some uh, training videos that we uh, uploaded on our channel on YouTube, you can figure that uh, that you can create your uh, standard reference drawing uh, or the, your uh, which includes your title block and your border to use it as a reference drawing. Now we uh, create the general arrangement drawing and you can figure that we have the design data table and the bill of material table. They are clashed here and we could separate them. So let's go again to the general arrangement and let's delete this drawing and make some modifications here. Uh, the first thing we will uh, change the location of uh, that view and increase the scale, uh, uh, minimize the scale 
of the heat exchanger. And uh, from, uh, from here, from the design data table, we will select design two, which includes two sheets. And we will separate the bill of material here. We will separate the bill of material to make it on sheet two. Okay, and let's click save. Now let's click on create to start creating the general arrangement drawing. Again. That's the second sheet which includes the bill of material. And if you take a look to the tree on the left hand side, you can figure that we have sheet one, which is the uh, main sheet, which includes the views of the equipment. And here the second sheet, which includes the bill of material. The bill of material now uh, updated and modified. The other tables will be uh, generated on the uh, sheet one here. That's the sheet one. Here we have this drawing two sheets. The first sheet, which is the general, uh, uh, the main sheet, which includes the exchanger uh, dimensions, uh, the exchanger views. OK, now we uh, done the general arrangement. And if you would like, for example, to make this view without any heading lines, you would like to make to make it uh, with visible lines only. So let's come back here and from the drawing itself. Uh, from the views, we will select this type. The first type, which is includes the hidden lines. This one, uh, we will remove the hidden lines. And let's increase the scale a little bit and click on drawing. And you can figure that we remove all the hidden lines on this drawing. OK, what uh, if you would like to make uh, this view includes the uh, uh, some uh, hidden lines for for let's say for baffles, for example. So for example, if we select this shell and from here, if you select the uh, main assembly, which is this one, and you can figure that you have the bundle assembly that we have. And from here, you can make the uh, baffles uh, assembly appear. So from here, let's show those baffles. You would like to show uh, to show the baffles only, not any other items. So from here, let's select the baffles and make them with hidden lines. So you can show the baffles only like that. Does that's the sliding part, sorry. So remove that one. And we have another sliding. That's the baffles here. We have those baffles to show the mid baffle and the last baffle here. Okay, so by that way you can add or show some elements that you would like to show. Here, let's add some dimensions to this one. The projection of this nozzle. And by the same way that we create the channel drawing, you can add some details like saddle detail. And if you would like to create a separate detail for the saddle, you can generate it by the same way by creating a saddle drawing. OK, uh, let's add some details for the, uh, let's say for the baffles. And you can figure that the baffles here, if we, if we uh, open the uh, bonnet simply, if we open 
the bundle assembly. Let's open the bundle assembly. And uh, let's open one of those baffles. That one, it's not include the uh, cutting of the uh, ceiling bars or, or sliding bar. So how we can uh, do it, uh, uh, because SEG uh, uh, not do it uh, right now. So from here, we will select the element itself and let's create a new sketch on it. And from here, let's define the or project the uh, area of the uh, ceiling bars or the sliding bars here and here, like that. For example, for that one, we have this sliding bar. Let's make a, a sample only. It's not for, for all elements. So let's make it like this. And now let's make a cut for this one. You can make the four uh, elements in, in one time, but we will let's make it uh, with uh, cut. Uh, OK, and let's make it like that. So you can get a cut for this one on the path like that. If you would like to make a chamfer or something like that, so from the 3D model, let's make chamfer here or there, define the chamfer value, let's make it five millimeters. By the same way, you can define the other and you can figure that you have or you get this cut here. Now let's add a detail for this baffle, for example, on, on our uh, drawings. So if we come back to the general arrangement drawing, for example, now we have this baffle. And if you would like to add a detail for this baffle, for example, For example, if you would like to add some center lines, automated center lines, if you would like to add it, you can generate it automatically like that. And let's uh, take a view for some of those here. Okay, and from here you can define the whole diameter. Okay, the whole spacing. All of that you can define it like that. The same for the location of nozzles and everything you can do it by that way. Okay, uh, uh, I hope I hope right now we can uh, we cover a lot of things in uh, less than two hours. We generate the complete 3D model of the heat exchanger with all details, uh, I think, uh, which includes the if we uh, take a section, for example, here we have the uh, past partitions here. We have those past partitions. OK, everything here we uh, generated on uh, the CD model. Uh, and we generate the uh, general arrangement drawing, which includes the bill of material. And uh, by the way, one, one more thing for the uh, bill of material here. We will make a small modification to make the arrangement from top to bottom and change uh, the widths. This one and click save. Now let's move it to here. And now we can split it at say, 56. So from here you can split it. So now you can make a separate bill of material as we discussed with the uh, for your equipment. So I, I hope in this session we covered a lot of your uh, uh, requests or uh, questions regarding to the heat exchanger and and how we can generate something like that in um, 
uh, minutes. I think we we didn't take more than uh, one and fifty. Uh, yeah, one hour and yeah. 50 minutes. It's done yes. in uh, one hour yes. and minutes. Yes, to generate the 3D model with all details of the tube sheet and uh, some detailed drawings for a channel and the general arrangement. Let's say, let's say for a professional one, it may take between for for this heat exchanger, but because all of us knows that it depends on the how much data on the model you will you will enter. Uh, sometimes it, it may take 30 minutes only to generate an equipment because it includes shell and head, two or three nozzles. But some models include a, a huge number of, of elements. Uh, so it will take some time. For this model, uh, for a professional one, it may take between four and five hours to generate uh, all details. Uh, let's say for uh, a startup one, uh, it may take uh, eight and ten hours to be familiar with with this one it will create it step by step and revise what he did so uh, let's say for eight or ten hours one day and instead of five days of uh, creating the drawing and you will get the complete 3d model so you can make a checking make a, a very uh, professional drawings for your equipment has, uh, just and hold on, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, yes. I think uh, Mr. Sopan is saying something, but we are not able to hear him actually. No, we are not saying anything. I just on the speaker. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problem. Again, please. please again. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, please continue. Okay. Uh, here I will show you some samples for real projects that we uh, create for here. Let's open the samples. Here, if we uh, open that one, sorry, for the, uh, where it is. For example, that's one of our uh, sample projects that we create. So you can figure that uh, you can get all of that automatically. Any modification on nozzles or pair of material, it will be reflected automatically to the GA. Includes the welding details, the uh, nozzle orientation. Here, the bill of material generated automatically. And another details for the internals. All of those internals are created by uh, SEG for this desultor unit and you can generate professional drawings like like this including a 3D model to show you how uh, to, to, to show your customers uh, that you um, making a professional uh, work and it will not take some time from you actually when you take uh, become familiar with SEG you will uh, deal with those drawings uh, easily and uh, this reading model uh, easily here that's a uh, detailed drawing for the manway the nameplate a separate detail for uh, saddle detail for example pipe support detail all of that you can do it uh, easily and uh, let's take a look to some uh, things we created for storage tanks for for example here some drones for storage tanks generated by SEG and if we hear some samples for pressure vessels like that all of that here you can figure that all of those equipments created by using SEG he stacked heat exchanger ducts spherical tanks vertical and horizontal pressure vessels <clears throat> so SAG is the uh, only existing software can do all of this stuff here. That's uh, all of this stuff of equipment like spherical tanks, storage tanks with fixed roof. Uh, ducts, by the way, can make ducts complicated pressure vessels like this vessel. OK, you can do it easily by using uh, SEG. Another uh, we have uh, some uh, 
you can make a slug catcher by using SEG. Okay, and those samples are done by using uh, SEG. Many, many different things you can uh, you can do. And in SEG, SEG helper, you will find some uh, lifting cranes. You can use it to make a lifting simulation. Like uh, if you would like to, to check something like that, you can visit our uh, channel on YouTube to uh, to uh, figure out some uh, uh, videos for the lifting simulation. Lifting uh, simulation for some pressure vessels. Here. That's a comparison between <coughs> the real lifting uh, simulation case, uh, the real case and the simulation case that we did by using uh, the library of SEG, which includes some uh, cranes. Okay, a lot of things you can do it with uh, SEG, by the way. Okay, uh, do you have any, any questions uh, regarding uh, the session of today? Yeah. Uh, uh, regarding the bolt, uh, for the second, uh, whether the two feet and plan geometry, in our model, I think it is collar bolt, but uh, we couldn't see collar bolt uh, arrangement here. Yes, as mentioned uh, uh, in SEG, uh, uh, you may need uh, to make some modifications that I had, like that we did here on the tube sheet for the uh, eye bolt. For example, if you would like to make a special bolt, for uh, let's let's say uh, a special bolt here includes two nuts uh, on one side, not one and one, two, two, two nuts on one side and one uh, nut on the other side. For, for example, how we can uh, do that. So let's open the uh, uh, SEG helper. That's the helper of SEG, which will generate uh, a, a library for Autodesk Inventor items. We will use it here. So from here, let's uh, create a new part. OK, uh, uh, sorry, let's from new here. We will select SEG items and from the accessories, you can figure that you have an eye bolt by uh, U bolt, something like that. You can add it manually. So let's uh, select uh, a bolt, not a stud bolt, for example. You will make a bolt uh, with two nuts from the other side. So let's select this bolt. Okay, and from here we will open the iLogic library, for example, and select, let's make it a UNC bolt. Okay, and let's select the size of this one as one inch. Okay, so uh, he will change the second knot offset, and let's change the total length of this one. So let's make it like this. The second knot location, let's make it on 50. For example, the part number and all of that. Now let's save this. So from SEG and from the assembly, we will save this document. And from here, bolt UNC1. Okay, let's create a new uh, bolt. And from here, let's select the knot. Let's make it UNC. One one minute, I will come back. One. Sorry. And from here, we will select the size of this knot to make it one uh, inch. And let's save it. So from SEG, we will save this knot. And now we will generate a new assembly includes this uh, those elements sorry, that we create that's the UNC bolt and let's add this knot okay so from here and let's add another knot For example, 
we create a new stud bolt here with with two knots. If you would like to add a bushel or something like that, you can generate uh, the items that you would like to add if it's not included in ECG. After that, you can add it to your model. Now let's save this as UMC bolt. And if we come back here to the model, you can import it like that. Even you will create it by hand or by using the helper, if it's included on the helper. By the way, that's the SEG helper. Here it includes some cranes, some shackles, transportation truck, some transportation saddles, so tilted or straight or david uh, saddle on the cone. So you can uh, make something like that. If you, uh, as mentioned, you can do it by hand. Uh, as you can see, SEG will cover 95% uh, uh, from your requirements. And if you would like to add something else, you can generate it or add it to your drawing, uh, to your 3D model. And by the way, it will be reflected to the drawing. Something like that, if we come back to the drawing here, as you know, the CAD software deal with that, so you can figure that the element will be added here on your 3D model. Okay. Yeah. What is our question? If you see, uh, in tube sheet and uh, body flanges, yeah. in tube sheet, cannon plan, shell flange and body flanges, in between, you have marked some white color bolts here. You can see in your figure itself. Would, would you mind to say your question again because I cannot hear you clearly? If you refer our drawings uh, in the uh, bundle drawings, if you say, mm -hmm. uh, you can see counter bore on the tube sheet hall. Not on the all bolts, some of the bolts. Yeah. You have prepared the, you have prepared the counter bolts uh, hole. But this third is different type. It's a counter, uh, sorry, color bolt. So we can't see that configuration here. This color is integral part of the can bolt. You, can you open our drawing, bundle drawing? I think you, you are talking about this pose, is yeah. it right? Yeah. Okay, as okay, okay. As mentioned, you can make your editing as you would like. Here is easy to create a hole. If you would like to make a modification on this hole, you can do it easily. For example, here let's open the tube sheet. As we discussed, we make we make a, a hole for the uh, uh, for for that one here. We we make that hole. By the same way, you can do the same thing for any hole you would like to generate. For example, for example. Here, if you if you would like to make uh, two or three holes with a large diameter like like that here, so you will you will define you will define the required diameter that you would like to do, and by making a simple extrude, you can define the value of this one, and let's make it with five millimeters, ten millimeters, uh, like that. OK, something like that you can control it. For example, you would like to minimize this value. Anytime you would like to minimize this value, you will come back to the sketch and uh, define this value. If you would like to make a pattern for this hole, just select the features that you did and select the model. <clears throat> we will make a circular pattern, sorry. So we will select this one, select this feature and uh, we have uh, 44 holes, so let's make it 11 holes. So we will pattern this on 11 times, something like that. Okay. I hope I hope my point is clear now. Yeah. Yeah. So but the huge stuff, the huge stuff, or the huge work, you you save it. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. We understood. And. Uh, for this matching, we can prepare color bolt as well, right? In the modification, uh, can modify the bolts in the bolt section. Uh, I don't get your point. So, 
to match with this configuration of the tube sheet, we can modify the stud as well. Can you open our one more second? Is drawing? Okay, down, down side. Down side. Down? Yeah, down. That is uh... right side, right side, yeah, yeah, right side. Yeah, see color board details. Yes, this detail, you are talking about this detail. It's an integral part of the board. Yes, yes. Yes, right. I know what you are talking, and I, I hope I hope my point is clear now. Something like that, if you would like to create it, you can create it manually. Yeah, to create it. Can or make some modifications to <clears throat> to SEG item. For example, for example, if we if we create a stud board like that one here, we have this stud board. Let's make it. Uh, uh, Let's change the lens on this one like that, and let's make it uh, 20 millimeters in diameter. Okay, and let's change the spacing. You would like to make some modification to uh, to this board. Okay, you can. You have many options. If you would like to select this plane and create <coughs> a new. New feature like this. Make a date for this one, something like that. Okay, uh, uh, delete the, uh, the UNC, make a suppress for this one, and make a, a thread here on this face and change the orientation of this face. Select the uh, Let's make it as a metric profile. For example, the size of this uh, stub. Sorry. I do table. Select the standard that you would like to use. And see metric profile. Okay, we set six degrees or four degrees. The depth of <coughs> This one, make it on the other side, so we can select the face like that. Make it offset with 40 millimeters. Like that. So you can control the element, or you can create it from scratch and add it to your model. You, okay. you get this point? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. clear. It's clear. No problem. And uh, this thread series schema UN8 uh, thread is available there. The database again, please. UN8 thread series is available. UN8 Tima. So, whatever standards is available, or whatever database is there with you. So, Tima boards is also available, right? Okay, one minute, please. Here, those are the available types according to Tima. Okay, nice. for the front end, shell type, and yeah. rear side. Okay, we got this point. We are asking uh, regarding the bolt only. Tima bolt. They are, yeah, they are asking. They are asking regarding the bolt. UNC bolt. Tima UNC bolt. UN8, UN8 yeah. bolt. During during creating our our model, we use the UNC bolt. Yeah. Are you asking about some of something else? Yeah. You, uh, here, like the UNC or you, uh, I I, did, I didn't get your point correctly, but we here we use the UNC bolt and select the size of the bolt if you would like to make it uh, uh, with the uh, millimeters units or in NC units. Yeah, but this is the question they are asking. Okay. 
Okay, uh, if you uh, if you you can you can figure it here. We use this UNC bolt for or start bolt for the. Uh, yeah, if for the UNC bolt, uh, we normally use till one inch. Above one inch, we used to follow UN eight. In eight thread minimum. That's the thema standard. Hmm. No, that's as a standard here or the database here for uh, for both. So can we select uh, if, if you if you if you have if you if you would like to add something uh, to, to SEG library, you could uh, send it to us and send the uh, Excel sheet or the PDF and our technical team could add it. I will show you something we uh, prepared it. For one of our uh, customers, they asked about it here for the web sheet. It's not. Yeah, no, we understood. Uh, if, if you take a look to this type of uh, uh, of tube sheets, they asked us to add this type of tube sheet, which include a groove here and a single raised face for for the other side, which is not according to Tima standard. So they asked us and we added to SEG library to be able to use it anytime. So if you, if you would like to add something uh, to use it uh, in the future, you could send it to us and our technical and development team will uh, add it to SEG library. One of our customers, for example, uh, which is they are uh, S-Tank, they are from uh, South Korea. Uh, they are they are a manufacturer of uh, storage uh, spherical uh, tanks. So they asked us to add uh, some features to the blade arrangement for uh, spherical tanks, uh, and we uh, we generated for them as per their uh, request. Okay, so uh, I hope this point uh, uh, I, uh, I can make it clear for you right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you have done any uh, API cooler schedule? Game cooler? please. Air Game cool. please. Hello. Air cool heat exchanger. Air cooler? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's open this one more. This was the thin tubes actually. Uh, that's an old one. Okay, what we'll do, we will send uh, our questions to you after that. No worries. Okay, I, I will. I, I want to show you something. Uh, it will not take a uh, second here, please. I thought that you take a look to uh, SEG capabilities before this session, but let's uh, let's say that again. No problem. Here for for SEG software, it is the only existing software can do all of this stuff of equipment. Uh, it can generate horizontal and vertical pressure vessels. Can be able to generate uh, columns with multi-sectional sections and different diameters and thicknesses. The storage tankers with fixed roof, uh, TMA heat exchanger, equipment piping, flag catcher, ducts, and spherical tanks. Uh, no existing software can do all of this stuff under one. Umbrella and here no uh, team uh, no uh, air coolers or calculations. Okay, if some of our uh, customers during the sessions asked us, is there any calculation how we can calculate the thickness of the head? Here, SAG, it's not a calculation software. Okay, it's for yeah, modeling and detailing. We understood this one. Now, we have another uh, mistake. We understood the concept, what we can do. And uh, if the design output is available, we can uh, prepare the drawing within the short time as per uh, what our, uh, you have shown to us. So if we have any queries now, we will send one email within one query and let us know what is available, what is not available, what can be added, what cannot be done. It's fine for us now. Uh, concept okay. is clear and we are happy with the uh, presentation as well, first of all. Thank you, thank you so much okay. for your valuable time. And I hope in this uh, session I could cover some of your uh, queries and questions. Uh, and inshallah, if you uh, still have any uh, issues or any questions, uh, kindly contact uh, Debek to uh, and send him uh, your questions. And inshallah, in 
uh, in the same day or the next day, our technical team will reply uh, on your questions. 